Hello, I am Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create the Particle Accelerator from the Flash series. So in the first show of the Flash, in Season 1 we see the Particle Accelerator and that's what we are going to create today in Adobe After Effects. We are going to use the Trapcode Particular plugin, that's the only external plugin that we are going to use in this tutorial. If you don't have Trapcode Particular, don't worry, just download the files in the description. I have already prepared the files and you can download them and follow along with the tutorial. And the result of the effect will be quite the same as in the series, not identical but quite the same. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is create a linear workspace. Every visual effects artist or most of them work in a linear workspace because these represent better colors and more, more realistic workflows and compositing and stuff like that. So we're going to click on here, right over here. You're probably going to see 8-bit. Uh, we're going to change this to 32-bit. We're going to change it to sRGB color space and we're going to click on Linearize Workspace. So this is just something you have to do before we start on this project and then we can search for an image of an aerial view, whatever you wanna use, go on Google and find something. And then we're going to create a new composition by clicking on this icon. We're going to create a Full HD composition. So that's 10 and 1920 by 1080p on 24 frames per second. And we're going to create it uh, 10 seconds long particle accelerator there we go and now we are going to drag and drop our image into our composition we're going to change the resolution to full for now so we can just see everything in nice detail and then we're going to press s on the keyboard which uh, will reveal the scale from uh, for the image here and then we can drag it up nicely here and we can fill up our whole composition so now we have an aerial shot of star labs and we're going to create a beam that is going up and create some lightning and cool stuff like that. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to create our uh, shockwave. So the shockwave is something that we see in the series as well. And this is, uh, we're going to create this by creating a new composition and create it like 1000 by 1000 and click OK. And then we're going to click uh, go over here, uh, new solid we're going to create a perfect red color. So click OK, OK. Then we're going to the mask options here, mask tool and choose ellipse tool. Double click on the ellipse tool that will make a perfect circle of our solid. So while the solid is selected, double click on this one. After that, you can press MM on the keyboard two times. So uh, that will reveal all the options that we can do to our mask. And we're going to decrease the expansion so it shrinks a little bit. Then we're going to mask it out like so. And then we're going to duplicate our mask. So click on the mask here on the effect, control D to duplicate it. And then click here on and add, uh, click on subtract. So now it's a subtracting layer. And if we're going to press or open this up as well, we can also change the expansion like so. And now we have a nice ring. So now we have a red ring. The next thing to do is uh, to duplicate our solid layer and we're going to choose solid settings here at layer and we're going to change the color to a perfect green color. You can also do this by just changing this to zero and one. And there we go and click okay, okay and there we go. Then one more uh, or well switch and change it to like additive or so. And then we are going to press MM on the keyboard again and shrink it down like so. Okay, so try to make it like reveal itself like we have some yellow here because of the additive mode. Uh, green plus red makes yellow and we want to feather it a little bit more uh, over here. So try to get a result that kind of is similar to this here. So once you have that rainbow kind of thing, um, the, the reason why I'm making this is because it's the exact same uh, from the Flash series. The Shockwave has these like deforming colors in there uh, from from a rainbow or something if you uh, if you check out closely uh, when the explosion is happening so uh, we're going to get back to our particle accelerator composition okay so now drag it into our composition and 
choose a 3D layer. If you don't see this option, just toggle the switches and click in 3D layer. Then go to the rotation tool here and rotate it on the X like so. And then move it over here uh, like so. Okay, so now we have our rainbow circle over here. And the next thing to do is press S on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch for scale and make it zero. Then go four seconds in time and scale it up until it covers the whole composition. So now we have this kind of animation, which doesn't look too good, but yeah, that's something that we will work on. Uh, maybe make it three seconds like so. And then the next thing to do is click on our composition and go to layer, precompose and ring explosion. Okay, okay, I, I made a little mistake there, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, so the next thing to do is right click new adjustment layer and we're going to effect distort and we are going to click on displacement map. Now we're going to select our ring explosion over here on the displacement map layer. And now if you're going to increase our intensity here, we will see that our layer, if we toggle this out for a second, is distorting the image. So now we have a explosion happening uh, just by deforming the image beneath it. So uh, a very simple effect to create, but it's uh, very nice because we really have a shockwave right now. So uh, one thing you can also do is go to effects and presets and search for motion tile. What that will do, uh, if we drag and drop it onto our original composition, um, it's not always necessary, but it might be if it's shorter that it gets deformed like you can see over here. So right now it's not really a problem, but just it might be for you. So uh, we click on mirror the edges and change it to like 150. And now it will repeat our image for, uh, well, it will mirror our footage next to each other. And that will make it not appear black uh, when you apply some displacement on it. Okay, so now we have our displacement happening here. The next thing to do is go to the ring explosion, make it visible again, and then we're going to change it to an additive mode. We're going to put this on top, just above our deformation, I think. Uh, let's see, um, we, we might want to use this one. So I'm going to use motion tile on this one as well and see how this goes. Okay, there we go, we solved it. Uh, motion tile just simply uh, makes it uh, mirror the edges, but yeah, we're getting away with it. The next thing to do is uh, press T on the keyboard to reveal the opacity and lower the intensity dramatically. So in the in the series, you can barely see it. Like even this might be a little bit too bright. So see if we can do a 0 .05, uh, 0 0.05 and that looks a little bit better. So a very subtle effect, but a little bit of color um, displacement. You can also make it a little bit less intense by changing this to 15 and 15. And now we can move on with our tutorial. So we have our shockwave ready. Another thing you can do is uh, like mask these uh, things out here. So the towers and put them on top of this explosion. Um, because right now we can see the displacement happening in the tower, but it shouldn't be displacing the tower because the tower is closer to the camera. Uh, so to do that, we just duplicate our, uh, our footage and put it on top and then pick our pen tool and just draw a simple mask around it. So something like so. I will do it very roughly and uh, just so we can move on with the tutorial. But this really helps on realism. So if you want to have some realism, this is a very important step. Um, let's drag it like so. Select it over there and there we go and now we will see if the deformation is taking place it's not going to deform the towers which is nice okay so you can do the same thing for the sky maybe uh, kind of mask out the sky um, because yeah you won't be able to deform a sky uh, it's only on ground level that it's deforming so we'll do it like so and see it's still deforming because we need to subtract it okay there we go Uh, I should add it and of course I should add it. I was a little bit losing. Okay, so now we have our mask completed and now if you're going to play this back, it's not going to deform our sky as well. 
there we go. And um, we might even lower this like so and like play with the feather a bit so it's kind of fading out in the distance. Uh, it's just a little bit of cheating uh, with the effect here because it's not a real 3D layer. Okay, so now we have our explosion here. Um, doesn't really matter too much. Let's increase it. Okay, uh, so now we have done our shockwave and let's move on to the next step and that is our flare. Uh, oh, you can do it with optical flares but for the people that don't have it, um, like in the series, it's just like a very big white ball because it's so intense. Uh, so we are going to create a new solid and make it like a very, very light uh, yellow color like so and click OK, OK and then close. Uh, click on the eye here to to make it invisible, to make it invisible and then click on the ellipse tool and make a ellipse like so or maybe more like a circle kind of kind and put it over here. You can move your mask while still drawing with your space bar. So that's just a little tip. Um, so we have our, okay, um, my accident. Um, okay, so now if we make it visible again, we can see we have a white ball here. And if we press F on the keyboard, we can increase the feather uh, like so, and then change the mode to add and position it over here. And yeah, that's it. Uh, you can also change the color maybe a little bit more intense because right now we don't really see any color graduation. And this really adds up in the add mode. So now if we duplicate this and make this smaller, we can position it in the middle and also feather it a little bit more. And now we're getting like a more realistic kind of flare, I guess. You can also play with the uh, intensity here with the uh, opacity and just try to mess around until you find something that is uh, well good enough for you so scale it even more down and uh, position it over here and there we go so now we have like a graduation of intensity of our flare and yeah okay that looks nice we'll keep it at that So another thing they have done in the series is they added a blue flare and that's actually like a distortion of anamorphic flares. They have like a very nice blue kind of um, flare distortion in the lens. Uh, we can also do that if you really want to. Um, I, I'm not sure if it works for this shot anyway, but you can just create a new blue solid like so. Click OK and then pick your uh, pen tool, disable the color here and then just draw mask like so and make it visible again then don't change or maybe change a feather to five click on the ellipse tool and make an ellipse on top of this and change it to subtract or well what am i saying intersect and then feather the last one like way more okay something like that now it's fading out over time so you can if you click over here we will uh disable the mask and we will be uh, able to concentrate on the effect itself. Okay, and if you change the mode to add and you change the opacity as well, we get this kind of, yeah, an amorphic distortion in our lens. And we can also, uh, well, let's move our mask a little bit more on the right here. Trying to click on this little button here. Okay, uh, there we go. And move it a little bit more to the right. And there we go. If we toggle mask off, uh, this might look a little bit better. Um, it's all up to you. So that's how to create that anamorphic flare distortion. Um, so, okay, next for the tutorial, we are going to create our energy that is going up. We are going to layer this in two separate compositions. So if you don't have trap code particular, you can always download my samples in the description below. So that's something nice uh, for the people that don't have the plugin and they want to keep up with the tutorial. You can uh, find these files in the description. So uh, we are going to create a new composition and we are going to create like a height of 2000 and a width of 500. There we go. And this we are going to use as, uh, yeah, our energy going up. 
So we are going to change the name to energy beam. There we go. Right click, new solid and make it comp size, click OK. And then we're going to affect trap code particular. We're going to emitter and we're going to place our X and Y position on the, on the bottom here. So it can go up all the time. And then we're going to disable our velocity and we're going to set everything at 0%. Then we're going to change it as a box here. And we're going back to the physics air and make it go up like so. If you drag your solid like so you can see um, your particles are already alive. And we can change the particle life by going to the particle life and set it to 7. And yeah, let's keep it at 7 for now. And then we're going to try and yeah, maybe make less particles and go to rendering and apply some motion blur by going to motion blur on and then just increase the shutter angle like crazy. And there we go. And yeah, maybe make even less particles and then just make them bigger. There we go. So now we have kind of energy going up like so. Okay, so another thing you can do is go to the physical, um, the physics here and also apply a turbulence field and affect the position just a little bit. And then we can see it's moving a little bit from the left to the right, which is a little bit more organic. Okay, so another thing you can do now is, uh, well, let's first apply it in our scene. Go to energy beam and apply it to the scene and change the mode to add. Then position it over here. And then you can apply something that's called Video Copilot VC Color Vibrance. And that's something very nice. It's completely free. It's a free plugin from Video Copilot. You can download it in the link in the description. Um, but that makes, if you change your color to something orange, uh, if we solo this, we can see there is light orange, dark orange. There is a lot of kind of colors for orange and that's very nice to have. Like if you would go to effect, generate fill, yeah, you would have one plain color and not the gradation from uh, like here, the highlights and stuff like that. So it just makes it a lot more realistic. So there we go, we can see here some yellows, some orange, and that's pretty cool. So now if we desolo this, uh, we have it as add. If you go to effect, stylize, and we add some glow, then we can uh, decrease the intensity, decrease the threshold, intensity, and then duplicate it, increase the radius, and decrease the intensity. And now we have this in our scene, maybe even the intensity here, 2.3. So now we have 0 0.3, 0 0.2, uh, well, 0.2, and the radius is at 200 right here, 40 there at threshold, 40 here, and threshold, and radius 10 here. Okay, so now we have our beam, and now we want another beam going around this and that's something that we will create soon but first I want to animate this flare to flicker just a little bit and to do that is press T on the keyboard press alt and then click on the stopwatch go wiggle open parentheses and go 8 uh, times let's say 10 so 10 ti um, 8 times a second is going to change 10 in value of the opacity uh, so now if we close this down, we'll see what happens for this one. You can see it's flickering, pretty cool. There we go. So we will do this for the other ones as well because I didn't do this at first. So go here, all click, wiggle, it's, and then we can copy this and paste it over here. So uh, go over here, T on the keyboard, Alt on the stopwatch, paste. There we go. Or what you could also do is click over here, click with this opacity, click over here and pick with this opacity. And now if you change this to like, let's say six, they will all change to six. So if we want to change it to eight, they're all going to be the same effect uh, as the first one. Okay, so one thing I will do is I will disable the last one and keep it at 100. 
uh, just so we have some different flickering but one very intense one and that doesn't change too much. Um, maybe the intensity is also a little bit too high so let's change it to 5 here and let's see. So now let's create our particles that are going on tour of this energy beam effect here. So you can also increase the intensity by going to the energy beam composition and increase the particles per second. Go back and see if you like it. Okay, so this is a little bit too intense for me. So I'll go back to 25. Okay, so just play around with it. And now let's create a new composition. Change the width to 1000 and the height still at 2000. We just need a wider composition for this one. And also rename the composition. I keep forgetting to rename them. But this will be like the broad, uh, the broad beam effect or so. And then create a new solid over here. Go to effect, trap code, particular. And now we're going to open up the emitter. We are going to leave the particles per second for uh, at 100 for now and change the emitter type to box. Change the emitter size uh, for the X and Z to 350 and 350 and zero out the velocity here for all of these settings here. Then we're going to the particle and we're going to leave the life at eight. Then drag down the particles to the bottom here. So they start off here and move our composition all the way into the beginning. So we can see that our particles are instantly spawning. So the next thing is to go to the physics channel here. Go to air and decrease the wind in the Y so it's going up like so. And now if we see we have an animation that is going up like so. Okay, so 3D particles going up. Maybe we can make it a little bit broader. So change it to like 500. And we are going to play around with this. So increase the size of the particles. And then we're going to vector blur here at the effects and presets. CC vector blur and apply it to our... Uh, solid here and make it go at the end of our particles and now if we increase that you will get some energy kind of effect in between our particles like so um, maybe decrease it a little bit more and we're going to increase the size random as well play around with a feather and see what the difference are Increase the feather to 100. As you can see, it looks a little bit better. And then we can change it to like cloudlet or something like that. Just play around with it. Change with the size. And then we are also going to apply some turbulence field here by going to the air tab turbulence field and increase the position to 500 or so and decrease the speed here so decrease the speed to five or so so now we have a slow energy field going up we're also going to play a little bit with the opacity of our particle so if we're going to change the opacity to like 20 and the opacity random to 50 we can create a little bit more depth so maybe 100 and let's say 50 there we go. And let's increase it to 200. Decrease it again to 20, the opacity here. And now we can also play around here with the render motion blur and enable this and then just increase it until it's starting to look better. Okay, so once you have done this here, we can go to Effect Blur and use a directional blur and increase it to 50, uh, well, zero, and increase the length to 50, and then, or, or maybe 20, maybe a little bit too intense, and then we can get like the motion blur of it, something going up, which is also pretty cool. Okay, so once we have this, we'll try and add it to our particle accelerator comp. So go to project and import the broad beam effect here. And also make it an add and position it right over here. Make it smaller maybe. And 
And there we go. And also copy all the effects from the beam energy effect. Control A, Control C, Control V on this effect here. And we can see it's looking pretty cool already. Uh, maybe increase the amount of particles or maybe increase the size. Uh, just the regular, oh, uh, 35, 35 in size. And decrease the opacity to 15 or something. Maybe even five, two, okay. So two looks all right, 25, random. Okay, so this is looking a lot better. Um, so we have one version with a softer kind of surrounding and then also duplicate it right over here in the composition itself and hold alt and drag this on top of this and this will replace this uh, one with the other one. And if we double click in here, we can apply a few changes uh, like another CC vector blur and see what this will do. If we increase it, we get a lot more energy going on which is pretty cool. Okay, so this is a little bit too much. 50, let's see how this is looking. Okay, and now if we decrease some opacities and things like that, we'll see some changes. We can also duplicate this and offset it a little bit like so. And now we get like multiple energy fields going on. So this is looking pretty cool. Uh, another thing can do is maybe make some more variation. Uh, let's say we want to increase our composition settings here to 1500 and width and also change the solid settings to make comp size and click new. Okay, so now it's a little bit broader and we can go to effect, distort and turbulence displace and also increase the amount but also the size. And then alt click on the stop uh, on the stopwatch of the evolution time times 100 and that will just slowly animate it. If we change the resolution to quarter, we'll see it a little bit faster. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Maybe it's a little too intense. Uh, so amount 50 and size 200. So you can see it has a little bit more life to it. So um, that's it for this effect. Let's go back to our particle accelerator and apply maybe a curves to our last beam effect here. Go to color correction curves and make it pop a little bit more. Uh, oh, go to RGB colors and just make it more intense. There we go. And let's see if we animate this how it's looking. And put it on top of everything. And there we go. And now let's see how things are looking. Okay, so looking pretty cool. Uh, one thing we will also do is create a new adjustment layer and effect stylize glow and increase the radius by like a lot. There we go. And decrease the intensity here, but still enough to create that realism of reflection. And then we're going to pick our ellipse tool and drag over here on the lens like so. Press F on the keyboard to feather it out. And now we get some, well, not too much of course. And now we get some kind of reflection uh, on the building. So if we change this to add or so, and decrease the opacity to get some reflections around it with the surroundings, so a little bit better. You can maybe also make it go up. Okay, and decrease the intensity to point two. 
And now we have our effect here on our footage. And next, what we can do is apply some lightning like we have seen in the example. Go to effect, new solid and make it comp size. Go click OK. Effects and presets, advanced lightning and drag it onto our solid here. And here we are going to use a turbulence of one is all right. The forking is all right. Let's just change the expert settings. Minimum fork distance to 32. Uh, change it to a strike here as type. And alt click on the conductive state. Time times 150 maybe. And now we can also change the fork strength to 0.5. There we go. And that will change our lightning a lot better. Now the glow settings, let's change this to five. Uh, well, this can be 50, radius five. Change it to an orange color like so. And then apply a style effect, stylize glow to it. Uh, also go to A and B colors and change this to orange colors. And there we go. And then duplicate it again and increase the radius. Intensity to point, point 0.2 here and point 0.5 here. Maybe increase this to more orange kind of color. Okay, so now we have our glow settings for our lightning. Let's position our origin to the center of this and the direction to one of the towers like so. And now we can just trim it like so. Next, to duplicate our uh, lightning, so just uh, duplicate it. Offset it maybe two frames. And there we go. And also change the direction to another tower or so. So now we have it starting on another tower like so. And then like let one disappear and instantly apply it to another one. Maybe for two frames then disappear, duplicate it again and maybe, maybe uh, use it like, let's start one here to this house and then also control shift D on this one to split it. Well, apparently it's a hotkey for my recording system so we can do that. Uh, I'll just duplicate it and do it like that. And then also reposition it to our location. So now we have something like this. And let's duplicate this, position it again here and this one as well. Make it longer and this one as well. Make it also longer. Um, maybe reposition this one to this tower. Okay, and now select all of our lightning settings here. Oh, just the lightning. And change it to add. Well, just the lightning. And change it to add. There we go. And now we have our lightning going on. So something you want to do, uh, you might want to do is make some impacts uh, for our lightning. So once it impacts, there is some deep so once it impacts, we have some debris f falling off. So once it impacts, we have some debris falling off. We can do this by going to layer new. Uh, well, we can do this by going to composition new and also just make it like debris 500 by 500 and right click new solid here. Click OK. Go to effect trap code particular again. We're not getting tired of particular here. Okay, so now we have like a little burst. Let's just make this like 1000 or let's say 1000 or maybe even 50,000. And then click on stopwatch, move ahead one frame and zero it out. And now if we play it back, we have one big, yeah, that's a lot. Okay, just go to the first and just change it to like 1000. And now we have like burst of yeah particles. So go to particle and change it to cloudlet. And now we have cloudlets. Change it in size as well, like so. 
and change the opacity maybe to 10 and the random to 25 or maybe 35 and change the color to like dusty kind of colors. And that's the goal. We're going to use this as dust of the impact on our buildings. So we also need some gravity by going to physics and increase the gravity here. We can actually longer make this longer here. We'll just drag these into time. And there we go. And maybe decrease it to like 200 or maybe 100 even. Seventy five and change the length random to five percent, the size random to thirty five percent, and the opacity over life. Let's ramp it off. So now we have something like that. Also, position it more to the top so we have more to work with, and change the life to one second, maybe point seven. Okay. And there we go. So now we have some debris that we are going to burst off our buildings. Which is looking good. Okay, so um, we're going back to our composition, to our first uh, particle accelerator composition. Uh, no, our effects composition, I'm sorry. So now let's let's go back to our particle accelerator composition and we are going to apply our debris to all the buildings that are getting hit. So just drag and drop it here. Like let's say it's impact here. So we are going to move our debris, position it over here and make it appear. There we go. Also move the axis here, uh, the pan behind tool, the anchor point. Uh, let's move it over here and scale it down like so. And now let's see if it impacts. Change it to screen and we'll see some impact uh, smoke, just some minor detail. And then also you can add some sparks and stuff like that from stock footage websites. Uh, like the Action Essentials from Video Copilot, it's also really good. You can go to Rodipolis, also really cool. Uh, and you can also apply like a new layer, a new solid layer, go to, uh, click OK, and go to Effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares, and go to the Options, delete all the flares, and click on one glow, click OK, and then change the uh, intensity here to add, uh, well, the mode to add, and then position it like over here on the impact and let's change the color to like orange. We'll just do this for one of these. And then you can click on the brightness, go one frame back. Well, zoom in here. So uh, let's go to the start of our lightning here. So the lightning impacts over here. So this over here. And we're going to drag our keyframe uh, to the start of our lightning, one frame back, change it to zero, so impact, and then quickly fade off to like, let's say five or so. And now we can get like a real impact here. You can see that's really, really cool. So if you duplicate this and like move it to another one, uh, let's see, where is the other one? Uh, it's over here, so let's move this one here. And also press U on the keyboard to uh, change the settings here. Now we can get a dual impact and this makes it look really, really cool. So you can do this for all the other lightning bolts and the debris, play around with it, but it's really important to do this uh, because it's going to add into the realism. So another thing you can do is click and control A to select all your layers and pre-compose them by going to layer pre-compose. We're going to name this screen shake pre-comp and now we can press P on the keyboard, press Alt on the position here and press wiggle, comma, uh, well, wiggle, open parentheses, uh, let's say four times a second, we are going to move it like 15 times, uh, 15 pixels randomly over X and Y, and now it's going to move like that. 
We can see some black borders here. So to solve this, we are going to affect some presets and search for motion tile and drop uh, this onto our composition here and change it to 150, 150 and mirror the edges. And now we don't see that anymore. You can also toggle the switches and apply a motion blur and apply motion blur for that composition. So we can get some blur in the movement of our shake. And you can also animate the scale a little bit by pressing S on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch, move to the end of our composition here, or just move uh, forward a few seconds or yeah, let's go to the end and zoom in like so. And yeah, let's see what we have here. So now it's uh, moving like towards it. Uh, so we have some wiggle, some screen shake from the explosion. Um, so yeah, that's also something you can do. Go back, go back in the composition. And now you can just play around with everything and just make everything look better. So duplicate maybe this one and make it thinner and wider, maybe. This will also look a little bit better. And once you think you're done, go back to the particle accelerator here and we have our results. So we have done everything to uh, make it look uh, like the particle accelerator. So it's just up to you to play around and make it perfect. I'm not going to spend a lot of time to make it perfect. It's just to show you how to get started on this. And now it's your turn. I would love to see what you are coming up with. So please let me know, uh, send your video. Uh, I want to see what you, you are making. So it would be awesome to see that. We'll just do a few more minor details to this uh, video here. So we are going to create a new adjustment layer and go to effect stylize effect stylize glow and increase it like intensity to 0.1 radius to 500 maybe 0 0.05 go to effect color correction tint and change it to 25 go to effect color correction curves and now make some curves look make it um, give it its own look make it a little bit more personal There we go, and we can maybe decrease the opacity just a bit. And now we have some simple uh, color grading to our composition. So um, this is how to create the particle accelerator effect in Adobe After Effects. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you have any suggestions for other tutorials, let them know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.